in this exercise I'll go along with you and we'll derive an expression for the temperature in a vessel and we'll use our 12 dynamic steps to do so or I should say our 12 steps in dynamic modeling so the first step is to do exactly what we just did identify an objective for our simulation and this one we're going to derive an expression for the temperature in a vessel the first thing we want to do is we draw a schematic. We have that to the left and label the process variables. So we'll just look at those right here. We have the temperature of a cooling jacket, ambient temperature, and as well flow rates and temperatures for each of our streams, and as well the volume of our reactor. We also could include the work shaft that's going on with the shaft in our CSTR right here. Okay, let's move on to number three. List all assumptions. Well, let's list our, look at our prompt first, especially as a student, that's a good place to go for our assumptions. Energy balance should consider heat loss due to convective heat transfer and the cooling jacket. There is shaft work, but no chemical reaction. So I'll go ahead and underline that, no chemical reaction. Reduce this energy balance by eliminating any unneeded terms. Liquid heat capacity and density are constant. So those are some good ones to start out with. So I'll go ahead and just list the assumptions right here. A few other assumptions we may look at, I'll put them with question marks right now, is assuming that our mixer is well mixed and possibly that we have a constant volume. Next we want to determine spatial dependence. Well, especially if a well-mixed mixer, then we won't have any spatial dependence. The concentration within the reactor, within here, will be the same as whatever's coming out. So that means that we'll have an ordinary differential equation, an ODE. Next we're going to write dynamic balances. So we're going to go ahead, let's look at our transient, um, our transient energy balance and go from there. So we'll start with an energy balance, and that should be the change over time of both internal energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy. Now two things we can do right off the bat. We can assume that kinetic and potential energy changes are roughly zero. And let's think about that. The speed of our inlet is probably roughly the speed of our outlet. And the the height of them, the difference in potential energy, is probably also somewhat negligible compared to you know the changes that we have going on chemically internally within the actual system. And so that should be somewhat of a good assumption. Let's look at just the uh, the written out form real quick, and we can should be able to see this a little bit better. We have a full equation now, and we'll go ahead and we'll start crossing out the terms that we said we'd eliminate. So we said we wouldn't really worry about changes in kinetic energy or potential energy. And we can see that those terms, the, cha the, the change, there should be like, think of this as a delta right here, because we're going to have the change in velocity in and the change in velocity out it really won't make a big difference. Our velocities will be near each other as in our piping systems. And similarly with gravity, there will only be a slight change in gravity and that will be overshadowed. And so we just won't worry about it for this system. We'll also go ahead and we'll assume that we aren't adding any heat. Is it could be a good assumption. We'll leave that for now. Let's go ahead and add that cue back. All right, so we're gonna change. We're just gonna write this out one more time. Here's our information on our streams. Here's the information on the ambient convection and here's the cooling jacket. So we've got two different cooling sources going on. And we don't want to forget as well we also have the shaft work plus if there were a reaction we would have R times V delta 
heat of reaction. So how much the reactions progressed times the volume of reaction times the heat of reaction. Obviously, though, we assumed that there would be no reaction, so that's going to go to zero. So now the difference, uh, if we make a differential temperature, we're going to be able to go M heat capacity is equal to the change in temperature or change in time. That's how we convert from enthalpy to our temperature, which is what we're interested in. So we'll go ahead and we'll scroll down. And we'll apply that on a large scale. M. So here we have our balance. We've uh, we've done away with the cooling energy since we assumed that there was no Q going on. So instead we just have the ambient cooling going on shown right here. So we have enthalpy of our inlet minus enthalpy of our outlet. We have the Q of what's going on just due to ambient convection and then our work shaft. The next thing we'll want to do is assume that our flows are roughly equal, you know, that there's no accumulation. So I'll go ahead and just star that and write. Then we can change our flow rate, m dot, into a density times a volumetric flow rate, q. And what that should give us is rho v instead of I'll write that out too. M should equal rho times V. So rho V CP DT DT is equal to rho Q CP T1 minus T2 We'll assume we have the same reference temperature so that we're able to do so. And also, I noticed right here, this should actually be, let me just erase that, that should be T out minus T ref. That should be consistent with what's right here. And that looks really bad, so I'm going to go ahead and erase it. Plus UA temperature of the cooling jacket minus T2 plus UA TA minus T2 plus work shaft and as we've discussed before we'll just assume these are going to zero that's just so you can see how those are derived if volume were not constant then we'd have to uh, we just go to blue Then we do a mass balance to be able to uh, do a differential. Here all these are constant, so we're able to just pull them outside of the differential. Otherwise, if that weren't the case, we do a change uh, dm dt, a mass balance is equal to the mass in minus the mass out. And then we convert m dot into rho times q, and we would use that to get a change in volume, which we would then plug back in the equation up above. Right now we'll assume that, so let's just write our final equation now. So we've got, and I'll just go ahead and what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just lasso this right here. We'll do a freeform lasso. We'll just go ahead and we'll swoop all the stuff we want, copy it. Let's just work with it right down here. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and we'll start just erasing what we want. don't want. We don't want these. We assumed they were zero. So we'll go ahead and grab this, move it over here. Move that plus sign out of there. Next, we'll just take this right here, move it underneath. 
go like this. So that should be our differential temperature with time. Hopefully that made sense. We uh, just to recap, we discussed first what our system is about, what the different assumptions we can make are. We took an energy balance, which is the internal kinetic and potential energy, and we said, well, let's assume the kinetic and potential energies don't really change much from start to finish in this process. Then we said, okay, well, there's some streams that are going to be changing. There's some ambient convection, some ambient cooling, some shaft work, and some reaction energy that happens. And we'll assume that the ambient convection and cooling jacket are going to zero, as well as the energy from the reaction, since there is no reaction. If we take enthalpy right here, and we take out the mass and the heat capacity, we're left with a differential temperature with time. And then we solve for what we want just with some algebra and plugging stuff in. And there we have our final answer. Let me know if you have any comments or questions down below in the comments.